Hi, I'm Rachel. Today I'm going to talk to you about our walk-in amplifier. In this video, we will conduct a quick experiment and go through how to configure and optimize Moku Labs walk-in amplifier to measure a weak 50 kHz signal with an external reference source. We will use two Moku Labs. The black Moku Lab will use as a waveform generator to generate the signal and reference. The silver Moku Lab will be used as a lock-in amplifier. First, let's connect the black Moku's output 1 to silver Moku's input 1 as the signal input. Next, let's connect black Moku's output 2 to silver Moku's input 2 as the reference input. Now that our Mokus are connected, let's grab the iPad and start configuring the instrument. First, let's connect to the black Moku and launch the waveform generator. Configure the output 1 to a 1 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak sine wave to simulate the weak signal. Then, configure the output 2 to a 500 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak square wave as the reference. The two waveforms are phase-locked, with an arbitrary phase relation to each other. In a real experiment, this holds true, as different instruments have different response functions and delays. Next, connect to the silver Moku and launch the walk-in amplifier. Set the local oscillator to the external PLL mode and set the auxiliary output to the filtered signal. Let's first check the phase lock loop and ensure the local oscillator is phase locked to the external reference. Lock-in amplifiers measure the signal in respect to the local oscillator. It is crucial to ensure the local oscillator is representative to the reference input. Enable the probe points before and after the phase lock loop enters 50 kilohertz and adjust the bandwidth until the sinusoidal local oscillator is no longer distorted. Next, adjust the bandwidth of the low-pass filter. In general, a lower bandwidth provides a better signal-to-noise ratio. However, Low bandwidth filters may cut off some of the high frequency components of the signal itself. If we expect a fast varying signal, we want to use a wider bandwidth filter. In this experiment, we do not expect rapid change for our output, so we use a 200 Hz low pass filter with 12 decibel per octave slope. Enable the probe points at X and Y output and adjust the output gain. In this case, we adjust the outputs in a few hundred millivolt range. This helps us avoid the noise floor of the digital to analog converter or digitizers themselves. Make sure the X squared plus Y squared is less than one volt to avoid saturation. If we want to measure the absolute phase difference between the local oscillator and the signal, we need to align the phase of the local oscillator and signal with a relatively stable input. Enable the X and Y probe points, adjust the phase lock loops phase shift, and ensure the Y value is close to zero. At this point, we can see the amplitude of our input signal is about 250 millivolts. Lastly, let's change the XY mode to the R theta mode. Then, adjust the rectipolar conversion range to improve measurement precision. The minimal range without saturation provides the best result. In this example, we find the 7.5 millivolt input range provides the best result. Now the lock-in amplifier is fully optimized. Enable the output and we can start the measurement. Thank you for watching and see you next time.